Good evening, everyone. It is now 6.03 p.m., and I will call this online public meeting to order. It is October 5th, 2022. My name is Andy Gregg, and I'm the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. Due to COVID-19, regular meetings and public hearings of the Clark County Historic Preservation Commission will be held in a hybrid format with both in-person and virtual participation options for commissioners, staff, and the public. This will allow for safe participation by commission members, staff, and any citizen interested in attending. For those of you joining remotely via computer, you should be able to see tonight's meeting agenda can't see the screen and have joined by phone only, I will be announcing the agenda items through the meeting process. The public and applicants have been that have joined remotely are attendees, which means you can see and hear the event if you join via computer or mobile device, or you can just hear the event if you join by phone. Other event participants cannot hear your audio unless you are acknowledged by the commission chair or staff and are unmuted. Tonight's agenda is planned as follows. Roll call and introduction, prior meeting notes and approval, public comment for subjects other than public hearings on this meeting's agenda, as there will be a specific public comment period at the start of those hearings. Public hearing, a certificate of appropriateness for a placement of a sculpture at the Clark County Historical Museum. New business, including discussion of possible new subcommittees, review of the historical promotions grants received, Re request for volunteers to form the historical promotions grant subcommittee, then old business, updates and announcements, including announcement of the grand opening of the living room office in the Lucky Loan Building, debrief of the leadership Clark County presentation, and an update regarding the status of the 2022 budget, followed by good of the order and then adjourned. Commission members, please say, I'm here, after I call your name. Jan Bader. Here. Vaughn. I'm here. Morgan Frazier. Here. Heidi Mandler-Huff. Here. Elaine Thatcher. Here. Andy Gregg is here, and Greg Foos is officially, formally excused from this meeting. Thanks, everyone. Now, uh, meeting notes approval from the September 7 meeting. Uh, are there any uh, amendments to the draft of the notes? I will note that the meeting minutes say that I was here and I was not. I think I had it in my notes that you were formally excused. Are there any others? Seeing none, I'll take a motion for the approval of the September 7 meeting notes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Julie. It's been moved and seconded that the meeting notes from September 7th be adjourned. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those notes are approved. Now we'll move to the public comment section on any items besides today's meeting items. We'll begin with attendees in the room who approach the microphone if you'd like to make a comment. Seeing none, we'll now take public comment from online attendees. Susan, can you please read the instructions? For attendees using their computer or the WebEx application, if you'd like to speak, please utilize the raised hand icon. You can do this by clicking the participant button or icon, the location of which depends on the device you are using. Staff will only acknowledge those attendees during the public comment period who have raised their hand by selecting the hand icon. <clears throat> when you are acknowledged, you will be unmuted. When you have finished your comment, please click the hand icon again to lower your hand. For attendees using the telephone, you need to press star three on your phone's number panel to raise your hand. When you're acknowledged, you will be unmuted. And when you have finished, if you could please press star three to lower your hand. 
Please note public comment is limited to three minutes per person in order to accommodate all speakers. We have one person online, Holly Chamberlain, who I'm going to unmute now. Good evening, Holly. Good evening, commissioners, staff, and guests. I have some uh, reports here from the Historic Trust. Over at Pro uh, Providence Academy, the engineering application form and construction documents for the upcoming Southeast parking lot renovation have been submitted to the city. The trust is once again working with Archaeological Investigations Northwest to prepare the application for the DAP permit. Demolition of the laundry building and boiler plant smokestack has proceeded safely. Interior cracks discovered when the process started indicated even less stability than was estimated, however. The contractor found that they had to take off about 40 feet of the 80 foot stack by hand instead of the planned 20 feet. The overall removal is about halfway completed. The trust is partnering with the Ne Plus Ultra Jazz Orchestra for first Friday performances in Providence Hall, with the first one coming up this October 7th. Tickets are $10. The Give More 24 fundraising effort for the Academy's excuse me, upcoming landscape design project was a success, and the Trust is very grateful for this generous expression of community support. On Officers Row and at the West Barracks, the preservation crew has been focusing on completing several tenant turnovers recently. An unusual one is the former quarters of the hospital sergeant on uh, McClellan Avenue, and now one of the two single family detached homes on the site. It had been occupied for about 20 years. Research to locate historic photos of the original interior to help inform rehabilitation decisions is underway. This building was formerly located near the post hospital, because, but has now been moved east during the construction of Interstate 5. Archaeological monitoring of the trenching for the installation of water and electrical lines north of the Howard House for potential use by food trucks has been completed. Plans for the Grant House roof replacement have been prepared by Eric Lancio Architects and will be put out for bid this fall. A new walk and talk tour entitled Washerwomen, Buffalo Soldiers and the Red Cross is scheduled for Thursday, October 20th from 10 to 11 a.m. More information is available at thehistorictrust.org. Installation of the new HVAC units for the 1938 NCO brick duplexes has begun. Two units are planned for completion this fall. Fire Systems West is performing its annual inspection this month of the entire site. The Trust is preparing the 2023 capital plan and budget for stewardship projects at the Historic Reserve. The plan will be reviewed by the Historic Reserve's property committee later this month. The Heritage Rose Garden at the Howard House is almost done for the year with its blooming, but Visit Vancouver USA has declared Officers Row as one of the top places for viewing fall foliage. The leaves are just beginning to turn, so plan a visit soon. The deadline for Valerie Savinsky Fund grants from the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation is October 16th. The grants of up to $2,000 fund historic rehabilitation or planning, research, and advocacy projects that raise support for a historic or cultural place related to the histories of marginalized or underrepresented communities. You can find the application at preservewa.org. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Any other public comment? Concludes the general public comment portion of this meeting. Moving on now to our public hearing. Certificate of appropriateness for the placement of a sculpture at the Clark County Historical Museum. Now open the online public hearing for a certificate of appropriateness application for the placement of a sculpture at the Clark County Historical Museum. Those involved in the public hearing will stand on the slide. Do any commissioner members have any ex parte contact or conflicts of interest? Board of the museum. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Clark County staff will now give a summary of the staff report and recommendation. Thank you, Chair Greg. Mark Person, City of Vancouver. Uh, we're looking at, a, as you stated, certificate of appropriateness. 
uh, for a sculpture placement at the Clark County Historical Museum at 1511 Main Street. Uh, the Historical Museum is on the Clark County Heritage Register in addition to the National Register of Historic The historic name is the Vancouver City Library or the Carnegie Library, now known as Museum. And under our agreement, um, Vancouver Ordinance 3243, we rely on Clark County Historical Preservation Commission as the uh, review authority for matters of historic preservation. Appropriateness of a building on the local register, the commission staff making the recommendation. The standards for uh, alteration are the Secretary of the Interior uh, standards are for rehabilitation. I've list those, started listing those on page two of my staff report. I'm happy to go into any of these. Most of these are going to be not applicable. In, in staff's opinion, most of these are dealing with alterations to the building. No alterations to the building, the building are proposed as part of this sculpture. Uh, Exhibits. This is a standalone freestanding sculpture proposed at the southwest uh, corner of the property. Did want to bring to the commission's attention item eight of the Secretary of the Interior standards, that is uh, archaeological resources and, and preserving and protecting those. Uh, the sculpture will include a footing, and there will be some ground disturbance. Site is not within an area mapped as a high probability for archaeological resources. It is mapped as being within a, a buffer, a site buffer. So we're recommending putting in a condition standard for us when the ground is see if anything is found that uh, that might be recommending that the commission the certificate of appropriateness for this sculpture at the Clark County Historical Museum. Uh, process questions that we do have the applicant, Casey Donovan from Vancouver. Um, I have one question for, the, for you, Mark. Um, since you, ma you mentioned archaeological resources, does the city have an inadvertent discovery plan that they can provide? We do. Mark, did, did you want to go through any of your slides or you done? I just kind of have these for reference. Um, Michigan can see here, the blank part on slide two is, is the proposed location at the southwest corner of the site uh, along Main Street. You can verify with the, with the applicant or I can check my notes. It is about feet tall. Have the review criteria, which is in the staff report. For your reference on the, on the slide. And the applicant has a, a some slides of it. Further questions from commissioners? And then uh, would the applicant like to come? Sure, if she heard you, Andy. Okay. <clears throat> I wondered if the applicant had any additional testimony they'd like to share. Oh, so sorry. I can hardly make out what anyone is saying. Um, but are you asking if I had any additional comments? Yes. Um, I'm happy to give a little bit of background if you want. I I don't know if the artist is here. Randy told me he would be joining, so. Can you tell me if he's here? 
Yes, he is online, Randy. You should be able to unmute your microphone. I did provide a really short uh, PowerPoint just to quickly give you some background that Andy and, or Randy and I could share with you if you're interested. So if you want to go to the um, next, the agenda slide, we can just give you a quick background, talk about the public art committee review. Um, Randy can talk about his concept and the significance behind it. Next slide, please. So in February of 2020, the uh, Vancouver Public Art Committee, in consultation with Uptown Village Association, issued a call for submissions for artists. They wanted to develop a site-specific piece for the grounds of the um, museum. In May of 2020, they did receive 22 proposals, which they reviewed and ranked. Three of the proposals kind of rose to the top and advanced, and they were all granted a small stipend to continue to develop their ideas. You can advance the slide, please. Um, the Public Art Committee identified several goals for the artwork, including demonstrating the museum's current relevance while respecting its commitment to preserving the community stories and artifacts and to be appropriate fit for the space provided. They did select one, although three really were stood out. They did decide to go with Randy uh, Wagner's, or it's actually Randy Walker's um, reveal um, to be on, to honor the museum and the community it reflects. If you want to go on to the next slide, please. Um, I do want to say once COVID hit um, in 2020, there was a freeze on all funds. And so that's why we're just now seeing the um, project come to fruition. We just got the funds um, available this year. And so Randy has been working with us on trying to get it um, started this year. And I'll let Randy talk a little bit about his concept. Randy, we can't hear your audio. Uh, hang on. I'm going to try. Could you try again? Yeah. How's that? That's good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the, the piece really, uh, the idea behind the piece is that, uh, it's really about the museum in a number of ways. It's called revealed. Um, in my research, I discovered that the building is made of uh, bricks that were from the hidden, that's the name hidden uh, brickyard, which was local. Um, so they are literally, uh, you know, made out of a piece of history uh, that's pertinent to Clark County. And uh, so the piece imagines uh, a, a fragment of this this historic structure uh, separated from the building and imagines uh, instead of a solid brick wall it imagines if the bricks were uh, removed these hidden bricks were then removed to reveal uh, open spaces and these open spaces are uh, filled a uh, few uh, se several of them are filled with uh, panels that small panels as if they were bricks that have words uh, that will be chosen uh, by uh, museum and community members museum staff and so there's an interactive uh, engaging uh, uh, community engagement component to this um, but the the real inspiration here was that you know these bricks which are imprinted with the hidden name, um, I mean, it just was irresistible to try to unhide them and kind of intermingle that concept with Clark County history. Um, so the structure is made of steel. It imagines only the mortar joints and removes the bricks. So it's uh, something that when you walk by, you it's made to see it's made to complement the building and uh, also change as your view as you walk down the street uh, depending on your viewpoint you'll be able to see through it 
it'll appear, appear opaque, then it'll appear uh, transparent to varying degrees. And it's exactly, you know, the, the corbels on the side of the building are duplicated within the sculpture. It, it really is like a, rep, a, a replica of a fragment of that corner of the building. And it imagine it can imagines it as either a ruin or something that's being built up. There's kind of a interpretation thing going on there. And uh, any, I can answer questions, or but that, that's it in a nutshell, kind of. Hi, Randy. Thanks Hi. for presenting. I find this really interesting, and I really appreciated the visuals you gave us. It really helped it stand out in a, in a really interesting way. Um, I just wanted to clarify the the drawings that we were given. I'm, it's hard for me to see what the how tall the base is. In some of them, it looks quite short, and in others, it looks quite significant. And I'm not sure which rendering is one that we should be considering. Um, if you actually go back in the presentation, there's there there are working drawings that give dimensions. So. If we go back to, yeah, I saw it in there somewhere. I'm having a hard time reading. Looks like maybe one foot by one inch. Is that right? We got a. There we go. So, if that can be zoomed in a little bit on that slide. So, the total height there of the sculpture itself is uh, about nine feet. And then it sits on the concrete base. The concrete base, um, I don't know if that drawing is in there, but it's roughly four feet wide by four feet wide. So it's, it's pretty small. It'll, it'll come up above grade approximately six to eight inches, depending on the final slope of the grade. So it's pretty low key. Underground. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's got to go down to frost level and basically support the structure. It's just a big block of concrete that's mostly buried. That's the only thing I was. I can't hear anything, so I don't know if anyone asked anything or. Do any other commissioners have questions for uh, the applicant? Thank you, Randy. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll now open the public comment period related specifically to the Certificate of Appropriateness application. Please note that if you wish to retain the ability to be a party of record on this matter, or to challenge or defend any decisions made in this matter. Please state and spell your name and provide your mailing address or email address for the record. We will begin with the attendees in the room. Please approach the microphone if you'd like to make a comment. Seeing none, we'll now take public comment from online attendees. Susan, can you please read the instructions? We do not have any uh, other attendees. Thank you. The public hearing is now closed. The commission will now deliberate. The commission must make findings that either agree with the staff findings on each criterion or make specific comments on any findings. I do not feel that uh, the building itself is going to be at all um, hindered by this sculpture. And as we've talked about uh, in previous meetings, you know, these types of art exhibits are actually temporary because they can always be removed in the future. So I personally have no problem approving the certificate of appropriateness as uh, presented. 
I'll now accept an, and I will now accept a motion, including the findings. Please say your name when making the motion and second so I can capture it for the record. This is Julie Spahn, and I will make a motion to approve this certificate of appropriateness. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Spahn. It's been moved and seconded that uh, the staff findings be a uh, approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need a roll call for a hearing? We probably do. Susan, would you mind taking a roll call for this, this motion, please? Shan Bader. Abstaining. Oh, sorry. Julie Bond. Aye. Morgan Frazier. Aye. Heidi Mandler Huff. Aye. Elaine Thatcher. Aye. Andy Gregg. Aye. Motion passes unanimously with, with one abstention. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, applicants. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. We'll now move on to new business. For the first item, I'd like to have a general discussion about the request for possible needs assessment and formation of new subcommittees uh, discussed at last month's meeting. And, and so at this time, I would uh, like to receive input from uh, commissioners on this issue. I'm here at the last meeting. So this is the potential subcommittee to sort of move forward the recording of, you know, capturing data from buildings that are no longer in existence? That, that's one. And then Julie just gave us an amazing presentation last time and came up with a bunch of ideas. And some things had already um, been happening with the commission before COVID that some of the new members were not aware of, like the newsletter. And so uh, a lot of things were discussed uh, and then Andy, suggested perhaps a we needed some subcommittees and that's kind of where we left it I believe yeah that sounds about right and I think there were a couple like she said there are a couple um, proposed so one was a subcommittee to work on um, I'm trying to think of how to articulate it um, we need design guidelines and so the subcommittee would they have a couple different tasks assigned to them, but one of them would be to do some research and then write a proposal so we can get funding to hire someone to write our design guidelines. And that was one. Another one was the newsletter, but maybe just picking back up on what we've done in the past and regrouping around that. And then another one was um, creating a, um, a why preserve statement that we can use for outreach and we can use also to to communicate back to our elected officials who appoint us and we can kind of keep that message alive of, of why it's important and what we do and, and like an educational piece mm -hmm. yeah and then I and then I think that last one which is what you touched on was doing some kind of gap analysis in terms of what types of resources do we have um, we we have a couple of things at our disposal that we can get access to, but there's also a lot of, um, there's a misconnect, like disconnections between some of those things, like different neighborhoods in our communities that could potentially be on a historic register, but there's been no outreach. And so we don't really know what resources are within those communities. We have one neighborhood in our, in, in Vancouver that is on a national um, register. State. State, red state. I thought it was the national. We have a couple that actually are on the national register. So, so things like that. Like we should have it mapped out. We should have kind of our community boundaries and, and have those designations be a little bit, be more public and be more well known. So then we can actually do advocacy and reach out, outreach to them. And that newsletter could go to those, you know, we could just have a little bit more cohesive historic preservation in Clark Kent. 
And uh, I'll say that I, I uh, sent BART the link um, to the state website because that's free. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have everyone's email because I did want to send it to you and I know you got a new email because it is free for anyone to go and look to see how many registered properties are in your, your neighborhood. You know, we have the um, School for the Blind, which is actually a, a really, really big one. Right. So we do have a few historic properties. In. And I think it's also coming down to visuals. We may know of these properties, but I think it's helpful to have a visual. We do have a map on our site that has um, pins, but I find those a little bit difficult to maneuver. And I also, there's a lot of resources out there, and the NAPC demonstrated a lot of them, and I found them very user-friendly and very interesting and very um, easy to maneuver. And so I felt like there was some room for growth for us. And one of those platforms I think we talked about was Arches. It may not be the right one, but it is also a free resource mm -hmm. and it's an open source. And they did some really great demoing of using our mapping and then bringing that together for a lot of different. And, and speaking of mapping, I noticed that Kim Gant is presenting at Revitalize Washington specifically about mapping historic properties. And she is a co colleague of mine. So I really suggest that if you're you're going, right? I think that's on the agenda. Oh, so if you're going, I'd like go, to definitely go to that uh, particular yeah. session because um, I've been working with Kim for a long time on trying to trying to get more of this out there, yeah. and they've been working on it too at the state level. Yeah. I think that's where the subcommittees were coming from, and then Andy was thinking maybe one subcommittee for public outreach. What were you thinking? I was thinking one for <laughs> outreach, and seriously, one for outreach in general that included the newsletter as an element, mm -hmm. and also the uh, the idea of uh, finding out what sources, resources are out there that are available, and to have the Historic Preservation Commission utilize those, be a member of that. But I think maybe a, a, the, an outreach committee that includes the Why Preserve Statement because we would be not only reaching out to constituents, but also to elected officials and city and county staff. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would propose a um, the an out, a general outreach subcommittee, and it would probably be an informed decision that the committee members could make as to what actually is available, what actually is out there. Mm -hmm. And so just a general outreach committee, which is really important. That outgoing chairs have uh, reiterated that as a as a worthy um, as a worthy goal and something that COVID put an obstacle in our way that prevented us from uh, really really uh, attaining that uh, those objectives. So not to, not to make it too tough because we're also going to have the the grants uh, subcommittee and and is that a, an element of outreach? I think that's. An I think it's an element of outreach. I also, I also really, um, personally, last year I was on it for the first time as a new member, and I really found it was really uh, useful to be able to get to know some of the different people and agencies in the in the area. But I don't know how much necessary. Well, like we're preaching to the choir, sure. and I think uh, what Julie was getting at was kind of making a presentation and, and putting some outreach out there so that people kind of know what it is that we do. And how you know perhaps we could help them in their historic preservation goals, whether that's a neighborhood or uh, homeowners or business owners. So prior to COVID, um, we we did have a, a sort of a mobile presentation about the Historic Preservation Commission and the Historic Preservation Program that we presented to all of the cities in, that well Clark County and all of the cities in Clark County. Um, so somewhere in the archives, uh, I mean, <laughs> both the, so it was a city in county that one staff person or staff person, a commission member that went and did all those presentations. And I can't, there was a whole list of places we went and I can't even remember where they all were. So, but I know we hit all of the cities in Clark County and then Clark County. And then the only thing I'll say is I think it's really important to bring this back around because at least in my city, we have all new people. Right. Now, we do not have any continuity in most of the cities. We're lucky to have like one person and they're probably the secretary. Oh no, I, I totally <laughs> agree. If we can dust off that, yeah. that process. Yeah. Um, 
and and get back on the talk shows or the council <laughs> excuse me the council workshop circuit um that would i think that would be a good idea and we had i think you're right and we had talked yeah. about <laughs> Um, when we when we did it, and we actually I think we actually got some recognition from the state for for doing that work. Uh, and we talked about needing to do it every couple of years, but COVID kind of kind of derailed that. So somewhere, Jackie can probably lay hands on that PowerPoint since she and I were the ones that put it together. Nice. Yeah. And this is why it's really helpful to talk about these things because we have people with institutional. Right, Jan was missing last time when we were right. we were like milking because Jackie was here too, so we were like, yeah. what do you guys remember? <laughs> but yeah, I do think that's worth revisiting for sure. By the way, the newsletter is a ton of work, and probably not widely read. So if there's going to be some kind of outreach like that, it uh, needs to be really, really well thought through on mm -hmm. how that happens and it's expensive to print and mail. Well, well what a subcommittee could do is to decide what was done before, how well was it received, and there's a lot of things that can happen in that subcommittee, right? Is it worthwhile? Who would be receiving it? How would they be receiving right. it? What's the content? How often? Like there's a lot of questions that could be re-evaluated and then that subcommittee can make a decision, um, you know, on very- That's part of the needs assessment because right. yeah. do we need a newsletter? Point out because <laughs> I remember having the responsibility of creating content. I know, all right. <laughs> you can only visit my beloved Kiggins Theater so many times. Really, really? You know, no, you uh, could. Yeah, no. Another uh, night won't kill you. But the, <laughs> what I would like to say um, is that the, and this is sort of wrapping it around the uh, discussion regarding the, uh, the the grants, the historical promotion grants. As Gretchen pointed out, historical promotion grants, and Julie had served on that subcommittee before, and it's a wonderful place for people who are new to the commission because uh, it is, um, it's a wonderful experience, I always thought, and it's a good, it's a good uh, in, an entree to the work, mm -hmm. and it, you get to see um, what is actually taking place and, and who the worthy recipients of those grants mm -hmm. are, and so so as not to spread ourselves too thin and to be respectful of people's volunteer time, and I want to reiterate that for the record, maybe it would be well for us to have this uh, outreach committee that's an umbrella of the things we've discussed, the needs assessment, the why preserve statement, possibilities for communications, a, news web, a newsletter, and other... Roadshow. Other, <laughs> and other um, avenues. And then the subcommittee for the, the grants with the idea that maybe some of the folks who are on the grant subcommittee would take a part in the outreach as a, as a, future, uh, as a future opportunity. I don't want to forget, to me, the most critical subcommittee is the design guidelines committee. I think that would Far more than the others. Yeah, that's, and that's If separate. we were to prioritize, right. And so let me just understand, so, you, so the grant subcommittee being combined with an outreach? Oh, no. The grant subcommittee would be a good practice time. That would okay. be a good, uh, that, would, that would be good exposure to the community, the exposure to the process, getting to know staff well. Okay. That it would be a, a, an, out, an outstanding um, orientation, more like an orientation. Yeah, it, yeah it, like you said, it's such a it's, a, it's a fun thing to, to be involved in. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the, your the fun and volunteer opportunity. <laughs> you know, it's a one-off. It doesn't take a lot of time. You read them, you, you make your recommendations, and you move forward. It's not like a year-long commitment. It's just... And, and be energized by Pat Gelato being present for the deliberation. And so uh, we, we, had some, um, we had some very good sessions. So, um, Julia, I don't want to put you on the spot in, in public, but would you be willing by dint of your experience in Cincinnati to uh, lead the uh, the outreach outreach that would include the design review and the communication and the needs assessment because I think you are in a unique position to um, to, to know what the priorities might be. I'd be happy to lead a subcommittee but let me make sure I'm clear about what's underneath that umbrella. <laughs> Let me ask staff, uh, we can't have more than three people on this subcommittee, is that correct, or it constitutes a meeting of the HPC? Even though we increase the numbers of the HPC? Well, I don't think you could have a majority. You can't have a majority or it's a public meeting. Well, oh. I mean, you could make it a public meeting, but it's hard to get work done. Right. 
I, I keep trying to entertain the idea. Could there be uh, um, I mean, we've al had alternating members of the uh, of the uh, of this committee? But I don't. Well, know. I think that you could. You could have you could have Julie spearhead the committee, and you could have people kind of come and go. The ex officio member. Exactly. And then take on certain things, you know, like I would really like to help with the mapping or presentation like on the website or, or you know, with whatever whatever you're visioning there, you know, that's something that I could definitely provide some guidance. But, you know, I'm really, I'm, I want to be on, uh, on the other subcommittee with the, yeah. that and, guy. And, and so, Julie, what oh, I, that guy. <laughs> what I envision is that while the subcommittee would represent three member, three official commissioners, you would be able to direct other commissioners to do work that contributes, even though they're not actually members. So that if you said to me, um, you would, for instance, Bart and I had gone to see Leadership Clark County and they've invited me back in December, that's an element of outreach. You could have me make a report to your subcommittee that I wouldn't necessarily be a member of, but I could contribute to. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to broaden the purview without violating any uh, right any no rules. I hear you I I guess I'm just I'm just listening and processing um, I do think that it would be very I think it would be wise to have committed people on the committee not ones that are coming and going doesn't mean that we couldn't have people participate or contribute but I do think there needs to be a core group of people who are working on it because this is quite a heavy lift especially the design guidelines and the writing of the grants and the getting the research done and there's a lot to be done. And so I would personally would prefer that follow under would that fall under outreach though? See, that See, I think it's too broad. I, I don't think, think outreach is too broad. Sorry. I don't think that that I think that the guidelines committee that you 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 put forth mm -hmm. that's a very small focused mm -hmm. subcommittee with a task. Yeah. Exactly. The outreach committee is a larger umbrella that's going to take on a lot of the little things mm -hmm. that are, have been going on. You know, like I know that Andy does, like he's saying, the leadership. He does a lot at the museum. You know, I do a lot at the museum uh, as a commissioner and not as a commissioner. Um, so you already have a lot of people already kind of working in the outreach. Your, your key people would be the person who's spearheading it, who can direct you know, like about the needs assessment. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you would want some, a point person to, to, to start that, the needs assessment. You would want someone to look at, you know, the, the, the outreach, some of the outreach aspects that you were talking about. And those could be your point people. And then I think what Andy was saying is you could bring in other commission members as, as needed. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have this really great idea about X. We know that you were a teacher for a number of years. You could provide some guidance or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm an archaeologist, you know, things like that. You might need to bring in other members that aren't of the commission that aren't necessarily sitting on the subcommittee. And we I could really also like use this as well. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say I really ahead, like Heidi. the idea because I personally don't have enough free time right now to sit on something permanently, but I might have the time to be able to hop in and out for little portions of things to help out. This would also be an opportunity, Julie, as you know, one of uh, my goals is to uh, keep former commissioners connected to the work. And I'm sure after all he did to, um, for instance, on the demolition permit idea, Alex Gall would be a really, a really eager ally to, to help you out. And so thinking of past commissioners, not necessarily past chairs, but people who are in a position who, who know how to accomplish what you want to get done. And it's way better to do one or two things very well than to have a bunch of things that don't quite come to fruition. We're talking about two subcommittees right now, right? Or are we talking about three? So I don't want to lose sight of the historic property right. issue because yeah. that, we're not, oh, we yeah. have a committee set up for that, right? We're no, not. it's on the table for okay. discussion. Right. Okay. Also. And so we are really talking, you're right, Jan. We're talking about three. Property demolition guidelines, and both of those are tasks that hopefully would have an endpoint, and then outreach, yeah. which is kind of an umbrella. Yeah. Okay. And so in terms of chairing them, should we talk about each of them then? 
Um, I mean, we've already been talking about the ones, but do you want to talk about the demolition in terms of what that group is doing? And we talk about that. <laughs> we talked about it some last week or last week. Last yeah, week. it was last week. It was yeah. just last week. Oh, I swear. Five for people what they would be getting into if they volunteer for it, basically, because that's what we're doing now, right? Is trying to figure out who wants to be on which committee. Yeah. Well, and, and form these committees, absolutely. And uh, I said that um, it is also a passion of mine to work. Um, to follow uh, Alex's work and finish the demolition and continue the demolition, um, you know, subcommittee work and bring that kind of wherever we get to, you know, step one, step two, step three. Mm -hmm. um, so I am volunteer. I volunteered last time. I said I wasn't afraid of legal stuff. I'm not afraid of council members. I'm not afraid of you. So. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> As long as you have time, I, and I and I do I do have a, I do have the time for that to commit to that. So you're are you saying you chair the subcommittee? I could chair that subcommittee. Yes, thank you for being so poignant. And it seems like Julie's passion is for the design guidelines. Yeah, I would like to chair that one. Yeah. Uh, and it would be great if I could have two other people on it with me. Maybe it would be good if you would invite. I have had success in forming committees by inviting people. And, and, and Greg's not here this evening either. Right. And sometimes, you know, putting people, like I put you on the spot, I did so with a, an appending apology. But sometimes if you were to call or contact someone, as we have done in the past, and make a, an appeal to a fellow commissioner, say, would you consider joining me on this committee unless there's a, unless somebody here is right. so passionate that they want to speak up right now because <laughs> it sounds to me like Heidi would uh, be in uh, willing to be involved in an ad hoc committee that uh, would maybe meet once like the uh, the grant committee that would require a one time uh, one one hour two hour time commitment but not an ongoing commitment whereas things like the demolition permitting go ahead this is Elaine. As a enthusiastic newbie who also doesn't have a ton of time like Heidi, um, is there a way that we could all discuss how many people are needed in each committee and then like type up like time commitments and what each committee would cover so that between meetings, those of us who are new to this or haven't been on a committee before, could review the different committees and then they ask to be on one next month so that we know exactly what we're signing up for? Well, you don't have time to do that with the grant committee. Right, we have to do that one today, I believe. And Elaine, just for the record, the grant committee is a one meeting commitment. Maybe two. Maybe, Maybe two? I mean, would it be a remote? How many how many applications did you get? Seven. Wow. What did we had last time? Six? Last year? Six. Yeah, I think so. Uh, last year we did it virtually and it took us, you know, an hour and a half an hour of just really talking a couple things out because we had I a mean, couple. at the most it'll be two. At the at the most. Hope to I get just it done didn't want. Well, and it's a two hour commitment because you're gonna read them. Right. Right. So you're gonna read the the grant applications, so that's an hour, and then it's an hour of the meeting. And in that hour, when you're reading them, is when you're doing your scoring. You, you read them, you score them, then you meet, and then you talk about your findings and decide where the money goes. I think a two-hour commitment is about reasonable. Last time I looked. Okay. Well, <laughs> about this, um, on some. One of my mentors said there are very few things that have to be done immediately. May I propose, and I'd be happy to chair outreach. Great. Okay. So I would be happy to do that one. And I think that's of the essence because leadership Clark County has given us a nice entree. And I'm sure all the participants in that program represent some spot on the circuit that Jan referenced that uh, we may be able to go <laughs> see at some time. And so with the idea that um, Julie is interested in the design guidelines and Gretchen's interested in the demolition. Uh, Morgan. Morgan, not Gretchen. Morgan. You'll get it eventually. 
<laughs> I'm an Olympian in, a, in another life. Frazier. He's got Gretchen Frazier. <laughs> Gosh. I even have a bad We have a park named after her. Uh, I know. <laughs> okay. Not spelled the same way, though. A lot of former students out there. I guess I should use that as a, uh, as a lame excuse. <laughs> Since Commissioner Frazier uh, <laughs> is uh, interested in the, uh, the demolition permit walk, and I will be interested in outreach, and Julie interested in design guidelines, maybe we could bring back some information at the November meeting. Yeah. A progress, you know, a progress report, and maybe we will try to. Um, inv I don't want to say recruit because that sounds like, uh, <laughs> you know, the uh, something that it's, it's not pleasant. But I would uh, <laughs> like to invite uh, folks who uh, have an interest in this. I mean, I think if if Morgan can get uh, who <laughs> could get Alex, and then obviously need city and county representation. That's pretty much. I mean, you don't need a giant committee here. No, no, don't need a giant committee. And for outreach to line up some um, some prospective uh, some prospective contacts. For instance, uh, I'm still interested in the underrepresented communities. Absolutely. And we do have uh, National History Day in the offing in March, and so that would be something where I could report about contacting teachers for uh, with students who are looking for a great. National History Day program that they want to produce about what's your story, and then give them a platform, give them a stage. And so maybe for those three, we could come back at November's meeting and give an update. Sure. With with those things that you were requesting, Eileen, I think we can probably each then pitch what the commitment would be, what you'd be doing, and those details. That's perfect. Um, as so uh, speaking for me i'd be very interested in hearing more information about the committees that can wait till november i would also be very interested in joining the um, grant committee for this month as they have to go over the proposals thanks elaine i'm writing your name down right now I'm getting it. I would, Excellent. I would have a strong interest in the outreach subcommittee as well. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks, Heidi. Depending on the time commitment, of course. <laughs> I'll make sure that it's minimal. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have interest in, well, at least two of the committees and separate from grants. And so that's one of the reasons I would like to know the exact information on each because I wouldn't want to sign into something and then suddenly let down the rest of the team. And and I'll just say from my previous experience of being on a variety of committees, committees come and go and you accomplish what you set out to accomplish. So it doesn't actually require all that much more. You do meet a couple times a month, but it's actually very casual and informal and it's friendly and you're working on things that you're interested in. So I would just say, it, don't look at it as, you know, my time is so limited and I'm really worried I can't do these things. It's more, these things are interesting and fun and you get to participate in making something for, you know, the future commission. So I just would try and take off the stress of, oh my goodness, am I going to be able to do all this? Because you work it out together of when you can meet, how often you can meet. Those things. Oh, commitments, those things. Yeah. No, that's less the problem. It's more that I join all the committees and then I wouldn't do my actual <laughs> job. <laughs> I know that I'm I'm here with two very skillful subcommittee chairs who will be be sure to honor your time by uh, only asking for meaningful meaningful tasks. We do need do we need to finalize our grant committee? We do, and that's what, and that's one uh, that needs to be done tonight. But okay. I think this honors what you were talking about yeah. last month. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it also gives us a purpose and and something to work together on, quite frankly. Which, uh, which, uh, one of the things that some of you have heard me say is that in the wake of COVID, we're we're just getting back to the momentum gained that we lost for two years, mm -hmm. and so uh, and I'm anxious to to do that, which. 
probably shows. But uh, anyway, so I think we have the items we addressed last month as being, uh, so I think we have done our needs assessment. Oh, and that's what I was going to ask you. Is the needs assessment kind of falling under the outreach or is it falling under the design guidelines? I think needs, we have done needs assessment pretty well just now by saying we need to have the uh, demolition permit work, the design guidelines work, the outreach work. And so I, I believe we have prioritized that. Now, that doesn't mean something else might not come up. We may discover future topics that we say, oh, how could we have forgotten about? Underrepresented in community. But that's part of our. <laughs> but for instance, yeah, yeah. For instance. I guess I think of resources rather than what are our, anyway, we can talk about it later. These are, this is enough, so. Yeah, this is. Because there's, there's kind of a big gap that I feel is out there and I'd love for it to be filled but I think we have enough going on right now, so I can just set that aside <laughs> right now. All right, so who else wants to serve on the grant committee besides? Uh... <laughs> besides Elaine. Well, I will definitely serve on it as a, as a person who has served on it last year, who actually knows a little bit if I end up with people, because Jan really helped me last time. Yeah, I you held my hand. can't do this because it turned out last time I was involved with too many of the organizations. Already. Yeah, yeah. So but you, you gave a really good... Refusing myself. So. You, you helped um, provide a lot of guidance on how to do it. You know, like it was my first time ever being on a subcommittee and you really gave a lot of guidance, um, which, was, which was really helpful. I can only imagine just being there with a few people who didn't know what they Here's were doing. Of sitting in that seat. <laughs> <laughs> I will just add um, the comment was made earlier that, that the grant committee could be an opportunity for folks to learn about the organizations and we don't have everything listed out because it just ended on the 30th, but there's a, a wide range of organizations, the usual suspects plus a couple more. So if, if the new folks want to get on it, it would be... Yeah, I mean, you can have three, so you've got Morgan and Elaine interested. Greg's not on the call tonight, so I don't know if he's interested. I don't think he served before. I don't think he has. He didn't I'm interested, but I've done it twice, so I'm not going to put my name out there. So if, if you can't find anybody, you can call on me, but I'm sure you can because... Also, we'll want to yeah. include Pat Gelato this year. Was she on it two years? Was she on it yeah, she was on prior to her. COVID, yes. Yeah. I think I met the, her. I mean, the, I was on That her. would be a valuable third member who's... Well, no, and you can have more than three. You just can't have more than three commissioners. Correct. That's what I <laughs> but if But if it were... Um, we used to have someone from the fort if they didn't have anybody apply. Well, that's right. Like their chief ranger or someone like that. Hmm. But I, they did... did no, the, 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 tr tr the trust is one of the applicants, but yeah, the but fort, right? But we have... We have Commissioners Thatcher and Frazier, and then if we could get Pat Gelada, that would be that would be three three well qualified folks. And I'm happy to do it. And I don't know if you guys want to reach out to Greg to see if he's interested. If he's not, I'm happy to fill the third. I'm also going to invite Greg to be on outreach because, <laughs> as a former planner himself, what? he's going to be on my committee. He, he wants guidelines. And Julie's. Oh, okay. Well, great. <laughs> But I was thinking I was going to capitalize on his former plan. Greg's going to be on everyone's committee. That's what He's happens not when you're here, not here. You get, so we you can get nominated just on everyone's committee. Right, but it's also about involvement. I, I would like to involve everybody who, uh, who's willing to do it. I'm, I'm All right. talking about that. Do you so, want, I know. Andy, I'm really, I'm, I'm, Andy I'm, why don't you reach yeah. out to Greg and see if okay. he's interested in the grant committee, and then if he's not, it's Julie. Then let me know. Unless Heidi wants to volunteer. Yeah. Great. If you can. Will do. I have that on my notes. Okay. And when are they due? When does um, when the grant? They're already in, right? I mean, no. When are when is it? When's our deadline? When's our deadline, yeah. It, it would be great if um, we could stick to the schedule that we did last year, where we considered the grants with the committee this month, and then brought it to the next meeting with formal recommendations, so that we could then take it to county council. Uh, in December, and that would, um, if all the stars align, that would that would work. County Council has indicated that they're not meeting at the end of the month. They've canceled their end of the month meetings. So 
we'd be pushing to get it on the early December docket, hopefully as a uh, consent item. And it wouldn't be the end of the world if it had to go into January, but that's the preference to get it in December. So the, the major review work would happen this month in the next 30 days. I mean, for the organizations who are hoping for a grant, it's always nice to know when you go into your new calendar year that you have it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I think we covered those items really well. Thank you, everybody. Anything further on the uh, subcommittees? Bart, did you want to say anything about the grant applications themselves? Um, I, we've covered it kind of uh, piecemeal already. Uh, like I said, we got seven official applications, um, and we the deadline was on Friday, so we haven't had time to, to put together a formal presentation yet. Um, and. I guess I, all I would say is um, whoever, in addition to Morgan, is going to be officially on the committee, reach out to Susan and I so we know for sure that you're committed. If that's Elaine, great. Um, and I, I don't know how we get the third person if we're not deciding tonight, I guess well, would be my comment. Andy's going to, it's either going to be Julie or Greg. Okay. So Andy, Andy if you, will let you know. Andy will let us know who the third person is. <laughs> I'll let you know if Greg refuses. <laughs> and then you'll let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> but even if it shows up in my mailbox, that'll be fine. Okay. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll clean up the application packages in the, in the next week or so and get them so that they can be reviewed easily by everyone and scored and move along with the process. I, I don't really have anything sub substantive to talk about the grants. everyone. Continuing on with old business, we have uh, an announcement about the grand opening of living room office in the Lucky Loan Building. So we have uh, received um, an email from Whitney Diffenderfer of uh, the living room and she says, hello, we are so excited to have our office almost up and running. We are looking to have a grand opening sometime late in October. Are there any events that we could tie in with on your schedule? I hope you have all had a chance to stop by and see the beautiful mural already. We would love to partner with Historic Preservation Commission in some way to help celebrate the opening of the office. So Bart, maybe you and Susan could keep members apprised of that when they do have the opening and we could ask that a member of the commission uh, represent the group at, uh, at the living room office downtown. Yeah, I don't know that we've got any kind of event they can tie this to, but I think when you know the date, it'd be great to send it out and see if commission members could attend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this came into the, uh, the main email address, right, Susan? Yeah, yes. She's saying yes, <laughs> so uh, we'll have to affirmatively um, reach out and, and see if they've nailed down their details yet. Um, if any of you you all think of, of some other event to leverage, please let us know as well. My, my head's more in county business than city business. I mean, they could reach out to the Vancouver Downtown Association and see if they could tie it in with the next First Friday Art Walk, which would be the beginning of November, not the end of October, but it's a mural. So that would seem like having some kind of a ribbon cutting of the new mural in association with the art walk seems like a really nice tie in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they may want to postpone it. Michael Walker and. I would just make that suggestion to them because I don't think that they probably care when they cut the ribbon. You know, yeah, they're I'm probably looking for the event or something that will draw people into you know, downtown. I'm sure they're familiar with the downtown association, but that, that would be my suggestion is because we frequently tried to tie, you know, ribbon cutting on new art in with the art walk. We will remind them of that. Okay. Thank you. Bart, Leadership Clark County presentation debrief. Uh, yeah, so um, We've touched on this a little bit earlier in the meeting, uh, but 
we were contacted by uh, Brad Richardson from the uh, County Museum uh, on behalf of Leadership Cart County a few weeks ago, uh, hoping that staff and, and representatives from the uh, commission could make a presentation at, at this uh, most recent Leadership Clark County meeting. Um, I had capacity to work on it um, and Andy was able to come. So that was on this last Friday, uh, the September 30th, and we met down at the, uh, the Red Cross building in, in the um, reserve. And uh, we, Jason was kind enough to dredge up a, uh, a slideshow that I was able to mix with some other slideshows that Jackie had created, uh, actually from those city presentations that you guys had talked about previously. So we kind of Frankenstein that together and, and made it more generalized. Um, and and the, uh, we did about half hour of, of presentation and then another 15 minutes of discussion. Um, and it went it went well. I think it was probably a good a good group to, to give an introduction to. I, I am thankful to Brad for for pushing it because it was clearly his that whole day with leadership Clark County was clearly kind of Brad's show there um, with several different presentations over the course of the day and they went on a tour and different things. So it was good for us to have a presence there. And then Andy kind of put a bow on our presentation at the end um, with some personal anecdotes and pitching the commission as a, as a active body in the community. Um, so I can answer any questions you have, but you can probably imagine how it went. And um, <laughs> Andy, if you had any other comments, feel free. As I said, my thank you note to you, I thought it was an opportunity for us to show the Historic Preservation Commission flag and that uh, it was a very receptive audience and that uh, the, the message of how to have history play a part in their organization, I think resonated with them. I got some really good questions after it was over. But, uh, it was fortuitous that their lunch was delayed and so uh, <laughs> they had an opportunity to ask me before, uh, before they ha had lunch. And, so, uh, it was, it, and they've invited me back for uh, another session on uh, Friday, December 2nd. That's an invitation I've accepted, and so that'll be part of the outreach um, mention in the December meeting. Andy, what what uh, was the date for the Clark County Historic Museum presentation that we talked about last time? Yeah, oh, uh, in October. Oh, I thought it was in November. Yeah, I thought it was in November. Oh, is that the one where the the HPC is the show. Right, we are the show. Yeah. We are the show. Uh, that's going to be the Thursday after our meeting. Today okay. Will be the, day the day after our, our November meeting. Right. I'm trying to think of what day that is. It, that, that works for me. I Thursday think. after Wednesday yeah. after our meeting works. I turned, I turned my phone and off. And clarification on that. Are we each giving a presentation on how we hope to work with the HBC or is it just an overall historic preservation presentation and then we answer questions? I'd say all of the above. That, uh, that is it a panel? It'll probably be a, a panel if, if that formal, maybe a little less formal. That uh, Even their panels can be pretty informal. To meet, to meet the commissioners who uh, come and I mentioned that I thought it would be good to have individual commissioners say what they would like to do uh, in the course of their commissionership. And so mm -hmm. I think uh, there will be room at that session for all the above, mm -hmm. truly. And so would we come prepared just to speak off the cuff or is there some kind of structure? You know, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask Brad for some guidance on that. Okay. Sounds good. And also it's really important that rather than having just a presentation be prepared for Q&A, that uh, to have to put a face on the commission and that again, this is a very friendly audience. And uh, I know this for a fact because uh, at um, Morgan's presentation in June of mine in August, it was, uh, mm. it was a very friendly group. 
And do we need to make an announcement that that's going to be a special meeting since there's going to be more than three of us? I'm sure we do. Susan, I think we talked about that. that we do, we do yeah. That it's a special meeting. Okay. Just check you, you have to give notice on that. Yeah, we'll prepare a notice. Okay, thank you. Susan, budget update. Yes. Uh, so I included a copy of the most up-to-date budget um, in your materials. And uh, in the email that I sent you, there was an attachment for um, Commissioner Bond had suggested that um, one of the sessions that she really enjoyed at the NAPC forum was one about the different roles of staff. And it turns out that they are having a webinar about the decision-making process, the staff and commissioner support system. Um, and I was thinking that you might want to spend a little bit of your budget uh, for anyone who wanted to attend, but I found out since that, uh, since I sent the email that uh, because we have a organization-wide uh, NAPC membership that if you enter the code Alliance at checkout that you can actually attend for free. So <laughs> no budget necessary. Um, and I can forward you this email that has that code uh, in it as well. But um, uh, the main message about the budget is just that uh, it is a two-year budget and this is the end of the two years and so uh, you can see the blue line at the very bottom of the first page. Um, there's about uh, $4,200. Um, not all of the, the revitalized Washington, uh, those costs are still yet to, to come. So that's still somewhat of an estimate, but I tried pretty hard to get that pretty close. So um, just wanted to let you know what the remaining budget was and that it will will start a new budget again in January. So knowing that, last time we talked, um, we had discussed whether or not there would be funding for me to attend the Revitalize Washington. Um, and I think Greg was going to decide if he was able to make it or not. And I haven't, I don't know if he is. Yeah, so I talked to Greg and he decided not to attend the APA conference. Oh, the APA. Oh, the APA. So is he planning on doing the Revitalize Washington? I don't believe so, but I will email him and make sure of that. So who, who all is going to Revitalize Washington? Uh, I'm going. Heidi, Elaine, um, myself, Jan, and Mark. You. <laughs> Yeah. And, and you, Jan? Four right now. Oh, I'm going, yeah. And you, okay. Because we were all set to go last year and we canceled okay. it. And so if we have $4,000 we're going to lose, I would like to go. <laughs> if that's at all doable. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem. And if it is, I guess I just, I was looking on their website today and I have to register like by the 7th. So, day after tomorrow. Um, so do I work with the same person I worked with, with the NAPC? Maria Ryan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. Great. Good participation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. We're going to the order. Oh, to go ahead. Finish that. Yeah. If you don't spend it, it and it don't have it committed to something, right. it, the money well, goes away. I'm glad you said that because I was just thinking, but still that relieves some money left. Yeah, there. so I don't know if there's some... $3,000 uh, newsletter? Uh, yeah, <laughs> another $3,000 newsletter, but um, <laughs> I don't know if there's money that the, uh, the committee that's looking at demolition needs. I mean, I don't know that there'd be a... I mean, it, uh, the design guidelines at some point is going to need money to hire a consultant to do the design guidelines, but it's probably, it's way too early to determine what that's going to be. Right. Can you earmark it? Something to, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Can you commit it? Uh, it, has to be, no, it has to be, no, it has to be committed. I mean, you have to have a contract. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you can't just won't have a contract. Um, thanks. Okay. Put in the cookie jar for well, it's new. We're in a biennium budget. So it's Is there, and it has money been put in the budget for the next, so how much, how much is the city budgeting for the commission? 
Okay. What about what about potentially using any residual funding? It's hard to know because I, when I was looking at cost, since the deadlines have passed, it's, uh, it's 1,200 is not going to be the cost of revitalized Washington. It will be it'll be a bit more than that for for someone who hasn't registered. With right. The, well, but early bird registration. Yeah. But would it be possible? Because last time I had talked about a potential training opportunity for us called Camp that NAPC puts on, mm -hmm. and we can design our own training. And I don't know the cost, but I think it depends on what you design. So maybe we could potentially put it towards that. Is that possible without knowing? I would think you'd, training? you'd have to have an agreement with. You'd have to, yeah, if it's your spend, well, yeah. We, can we would. Do you have, do they have dates in mind? Or is it you I think you can design, yeah. And so the part of the discussion last week, and we hadn't come into any decisions, was maybe reaching out to other commissions in Washington and collaborating and having a, a co, you know, a co-hosted one where we could share the costs and, and the venue and all of those different things. That was just a thrown out there as an idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just don't know that you can get all that in no. lined up by the end of December. Oh, it's December. Oh, yeah. okay. Could you fund an HPG grant with any of that leftover money? I mean, you have a dedicated source for HPG grants. I don't know how you would. And the city's money is for outreach and Education. training. Got it. Okay. Um, well, I mean, this, this two-year budget is an anomaly, too, because of COVID, and that right. some of the things we would spend money on ordinarily did, didn't have, we didn't have the opportunity. Okay. Well, I, I can... Um, look up the information on camp and yeah, maybe reach great. out to them and say, hey, we have a commission of this many people. Sure. We have a little bit of money left over if we were to put... Well, at least to get the information how much a camp training yeah. typically costs and what their offerings are. Yeah. Best okay. I may reach out to you and Andy just to show you the offerings to see yeah. if we can help put together what we, a package would look like. Yeah. That's okay. great. Okay. Thank but you. If, if Two more people go to revitalize Washington. You said it's 1,200 roughly each. Probably It'll be a little bit more. Yeah, it's probably. So and that was using the conference rate for the hotel, and that tends to be the, the cost to budget. Yeah. You, well, you know, I don't. Is the city sending anybody? Because no, it, it can pay for staff too. Yeah. Nobody wants to go. Conflict. Yeah, I can't. I actually thought about it. What about Mark? You could ask Mark. Yeah. I mean, you could ask because he he did go to. The, uh, the Main Street Conference in Seattle a couple of years ago. We were both there at the same time. I think that's a good idea. And Do I don't know if either staff. Susan or Bart wants to go to revitalize Washington. I, I don't, don't have the availability. It sounds interesting. We should definitely keep that in mind for next year because it is available for staff as well as commissioners. Good. We want to make sure the staff are trained too. Yeah. I suppose if there's any remaining dollars and cents right before the end of the year if there's any like books or publications that maybe for the design guidelines is that maybe there they, yeah i mean if material some, you need yeah that's the thought if there's materials okay. i mean we have a little staff library in one of the cubicles but if there's like a an, an architecture book or an archaeology something that would be for the good of the order what's that know. book that um Donna Blank. I'll send it. I, I bought it after that. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It's a long name. <laughs> Which one? What? It, it's like the architectural guideline. Yeah, when Michelle was here, did the presentation, she recommended oh, that. I have that. Oh, right. Yeah, and I have that book. Own it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But and also, the, I, I wondered if the preservation would entertain an idea of creating like a lending library. Mm, I like that. Yeah, who, are we who are we lending to? Maybe to um, people who were giving a uh, certificate of appropriateness to, so they can kind of understand some of the processes. We tend to hand them out a lot of information that they don't seem to have, yeah. like about mortar and about some of the things that you were actually talking it, about. Like, yeah. Maybe, so maybe scholarships for National History Day participants who are willing to uh, take part in the What's Your Story. Um, so next month, next November. I'm sorry, Andy. That's fine. We're good. Did I? you off I'm sorry if I did okay thank you um, so sorry I'm just going back to this what you were saying a minute ago which is once you add another person that costs are going to change and we may not have that much would we have a more accurate idea of what our what our leftover budget is 
once I've been able to register and do all that, all of that, right? And then maybe from there, then we can, and, and I can also look into camp in the meantime, and I can also look into seeing if there's other resources for the design guidelines. So then maybe November we have a better sense. Does that work? And no one's, no one's interested okay. in the APA conference. Isn't you were, you, were, you were, weren't you, Andy? I mean, but is it is is there really much of anything that's? There was one thing I saw that was relevant. But I forget what it's called. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we did look at the APA conference, and I talked to Jackie about. There's one specific session that does involve some preservation discussion, but there were a couple others that were um, related, and so Jackie thought it was it could pay for the. Uh, did you send a link to the conference to the commission? Am I sure? Too late? Well, Might be late. Online, yeah, I know online registration ended Friday. Oh, it's not, sorry, I didn't realize it's next week. Next week. Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was in November. So I just, before we lose this, um, I just want to note, Julie, we should uh, coordinate soon because uh, online registration for Revitalized Washington closes on October, this Friday. Um, and we should probably check into the cost of the, the additional cost for the um, hotel. Yeah. I was looking at it today. That's what I'm like. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, can I also ask one other just clarifying question? So this requires a lot of coordination amongst ourselves. Do we, but we don't necessarily have each other's information. Is there a list that we can have shared with us, like an email list or some way of reaching out to each other? Is that possible? Is that okay to do that? It's okay one-on-one. -on -one. But I mean, yeah. But, but I, you don't want to send to, something to everybody without... No, no. But yep. I don't have a list. Staff. So if I'm like, I need to reach out to Jan, I would have to go back to some old email to try right. to contact information. That's if good. if I can find it, right? Right. So, so I think the roster is actually... The roster doesn't have email addresses. Oh, maybe only the staff copy has yeah. no <laughs> Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> I've looked. Okay. We know how to find all of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. No, I think would be it's yeah. I think it's totally fine to share email, yeah. everybody's email and list just with just with the understanding that you can't have a un, policy yeah. discussion right. and you, you can't, can't include, include everybody. Yeah. But it, so you're it gonna would be need nice it to know how to reach out to like for subcommittee work, you're gonna need it for your subcommittee mm -hmm. members because you have to coordinate the meetings and Unless we, Bart and Susan want to take no, a bunch no, of... No, we just all have to be very cognizant of the public meetings <laughs> right. rules and just one 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 on one, one on one emails and phone calls and texts. You can have two people, like my committee could be right. to each other. Yes. And then we could have a city person, like a city or county person. Right. Staff. In fact, that, it's but best nothing if you have that. a staff person on yeah. because that way they have the public record. Right. And if someone wants to do a public <laughs> records request, they don't have to go to right. Go to if we you. can get a list, that would be super helpful. Yeah, we'll do one one way emails to everybody so that you have it. That'd be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, for good of the order, I wanted to say thank you very much to Bart for a great presentation at Leadership Clark County. <laughs> <laughs> that that was in the record and. Appreciate Susan getting all the information to me in advance of the meeting so that it goes smoothly. And thanks to fellow commissioners for being willing to uh, lead a subcommittee or participate on a subcommittee because uh, properly done committee work can uh, not only be satisfying, but it can be effective. I thank them for that. Any others? If none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Jan Bader. I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Frazier. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, I'm excited about the new name. <laughs> thanks, Morgan. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that the meeting be adjourned. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.